It's a great day to be alive. We came here today, all the speakers, and I particularly came here today to tell a story of the last 21 months, to tell a story of hope and change, to talk about the need to be in a focus of real reform. On December 29, 2010, I met the governor for the first time. This was after I told him, no, I would never take this job under any circumstances three times. I met him on that day and my life changed. This became a calling. The reason I didn't want to do it, I was too focused on my own personal needs and happiness and everything was fine. But on December 29th, the calling took place to help reform this system. And folks, we're in the need of real reform. We're t life is too short to tinker. If you thought about that, we, we like to tinker. Life is too short to do that. You know, today also pushes that reform movement, not just in the lives of Ohioans, but it should be starting a debate across this country. Do you realize that one out of every four people incarcerated in the world are incarcerated in the civilized confines of the United States of America. One out of four. It's the American way. So let's set about reform. Let's take a look at reform and take a look at uh, the model. One of the things that I didn't want to do, and I have a tendency to do, is to be pretty spontaneous. So what I didn't want to do is to create a framework of reform that would be the flavor of the month that would not be sustainable. So I looked at the only psychological term that I had any idea about, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, that made sense to me. And I said, we need to think about this in terms of our reform. So the reform in our hierarchy of criminal justice reform starts with safety. January 2011, we had 1,300 inmates in Ohio's prisons locked up in their cells not because they did anything wrong, but because they were afraid to come out of their cells. They were afraid of being beaten up and assaulted or a piece of metal plunged into their body. These are the same people that were getting ready to be released that should have taken the advantage of programs like Lifeline and things. We have to deal with that. Stability and order, we need to ensure that we have the right people in the right seats and the right places. So we created a three-tier system. You heard a little bit about the reintegration unit that's starting here at this facility. We're starting six of these around the system, and hopefully within 16 day, or 60 days, we'll have 1,500 inmates in a center where they will be working eight hours a day in meaningful work and program and bringing private sector companies in to help interview them and prepare them for a job and bringing reentry coalitions into our prisons so that no one is ever released from Ohio's prisons without having face-to-face -face contact with someone they'll be working with on the street. Service delivery, it's important. We need to think about how we're engaging with our folks. 2008, we decided to take unit management out of our prisons in many cases. So we abandoned our correctional officers. We left the correctional officers to take care of all of the security issues, all of those fundamental issues. And also, by the way, in the event we have a loved one die, the officer was there to talk to the inmate about that as well. The resources that we have, our staff resources, need to be deployed where our offenders are, where we can help and we can start talking about a pro-social way of doing business. Self-development, we now know. When I was a warden of four different places, we had it in our heart to try to do the right thing, to try to issue and deliver programs that worked and would change lives. That's why I started in this business January 1st, 1974 at this prison, to try to do the right thing. But when I was a warden, we didn't know what worked. We just used what felt good in our guts. We now know what works. We need to expand those programs. We need to bring the unit staff in the units, train them to deliver evidence-based programs so that we can offer more opportunities for people to change. And our top tier that really reflects our reintegration units, personal and society wellness. This is no longer a prison business and a community business. We are one system. 
before the end of this year, our table of organization will not have a division of parole and community services. It's not going to have a division of prisons. We're going to be one because we're going to focus on the mission. It's not a page and a half mission as it was when I entered this business 21 months ago. It was a page and a half. And I challenged anyone to tell me what our mission was. Not one person could. I'm not sure what functionality a mission statement is if no one knows it. But our mission statement simply now is this. Our mission is to reduce recidivism among those we touch. And that means a great deal. Well, in the last 21 months, we've done a few things. We've passed sentencing reform, which has already had an impact of deflecting 30, we're 31% fewer low-level, nonviolent offenders coming to prison. We've reduced that number by 31%. Our count is now lower than it's been since 2007. And the neat thing, in a way, is that we have yet to start really releasing and reducing people's sentence. The 80% and the judicial release have not really taken hold yet. We have a great opportunity and a great future as we move forward. We take a look also at some things uh, that we have, we have done, bringing unit management back, taking a look at programs, taking a look at our three-tier system, dissolving the lines between community and prisons, bringing reentry coalitions so that every county can be represented by a group of people that care about the return of folks. But let me tell you, as we look into the future, something that is concerning, and some, I'm going to say something that people probably are not going to like well. But let me start you with a question. If I were to ask this group of people today, what percent of those released from prisons, from Ohio's prisons three years ago, have returned to prison? I guess it's a rhetorical question. I'm not hearing any responses. <laughs> Let me tell you the scary subject of, of this, or the response to this. I ask every new employee that comes to work for our agency, every one, I ask them that question. Of those people released from prison three years ago, what percent has come back? The most frequent answers range from 60 to 70 to 80 percent. Now these are people on the very first day of starting a career to work in our system. The truth is, and you know it, the truth is that only 31.2 percent of the people released from prison came back in the last three years. A better way to say that is 68.8% of the people have not come back, and after three years, the rate of coming back is, is reduced significantly. We have a story of success. We have people whose hearts are committed to turning this around, both inmates and offenders and staff. But think about this. Think about those new employees getting ready to embark upon a career journey who believe that a majority of our people, our offenders, are going to return to prison in three years. Now, if they believe that, how do they interact with people? Are they concerned about delivering programs to folks? Because most of them are going to fail anyway. This, folks, is an important issue for our society. We need to understand that people can change and people are changing. Through the spirit of the, the men in blue here and the, through the spirit of our staff. And let me tell you this. I believe that the single greatest obstacle to our continued success is this. And I hate to say this, folks, but I believe it in my heart. That we have too many people in this state, in this country that believe that because someone's wearing blue, they're less than human. Something happens. They come to prison. They're in the criminal justice system, so they are not like us. Until, folks, we have unconditional regard for people that we work with unconditionally as people who are fathers, who are spouses, who are potential employees, until we have the belief 
that our career in this business is worthwhile because people can change, we're not going to fully realize the opportunity of this great discipline, this great business of ours, the criminal justice business. God bless every one of you, whether you're in blue, whether you're working with offenders, or whether you're here because you, you care. And let's carry the message out about the great success that can take place in our system. Thank you.